Pentium Communication Active。让我们欢迎今天的主持人叶星辰所长以及 Dr. Pei Pei。So, who are we, and what do we believe about ourselves? Ours are the faces of many peoples, the bearers of many identities. We are public servants, fiercely dedicated public servants, and we believe in the power of our mission. We see how our work connects to the greater good. We are passionate about what we do. We are courageous. We welcome challenges. 
We strive to create opportunities for everyone to connect with their parks. We support local communities. We are stewards. We are family. We are ambassadors. We are all of this because we believe that we did not inherit, but we borrowed from our future. Yeah, we are beautiful. America's best idea. But is believing in who we are enough? Are we connecting with the next generation? Do we learn from our own diversity? Have we truly ensured that all people feel invited, included, and engaged? Can we risk not meeting the needs of an increasingly diverse America? To be America's best, we need to go out and invite new audiences. Share the difficult stories. Meet the needs of an ever-evolving society. Confront our discomfort realize that many people value our mission as much as we do. Harness the power of our own diversity. Seek opinions different than our own. Really listen. Be willing to implement new ideas. Be flexible. Build meaningful connections with others. And embrace change as an opportunity to learn and Relevancy, diversity, and inclusion are pillars. They are values and practices for connecting the public to our mission and fulfilling our obligation to steward our nation's natural and cultural heritage. Discussing and debating these values embodies our democratic ideals and strengthens our role in society. Listen, share, join in the discussion. We're all in this together. We are the National Park Service. So, I love that video. It gets me every time. This year is the 100th anniversary of the National Park Service, and that's one of the videos I've made to celebrate it. Um, but there's many things that that video is trying to communicate. Um, can you share, can you tell me what is one thing, one idea, one word that comes to your mind when you see this video? What did it make you feel? What did it make you think? Service，啊，美国的国家公园，国家公园，呃，国家公园，呃，National if you want to share, I don't have any prizes. Well, I do. Yes, we actually have this beautiful Centennial National Park Service pin that you can wear. Happy, happy. Yes, okay, all right. Thank you. So, what comes to your mind? And you can say it in Chinese, and Professor Ye can translate. Okay, she said that uh, uh, she saw everybody uh, from their face. Uh, she can feel uh, satisfied, happy. And uh, 
because uh, of uh, the, their service to the general public, so they feel that they are really, very happy about everything. Okay, so that's great. So they, they feel happy. Uh, there's a certain sense of pride um, of the, the work they're doing, right? They're serving all of common goal. Uh, that's great. Anyone else who wants to share? Okay. <coughs> Uh, she was attracted by the music, uh, and uh, the music uh, rang very slowly, and uh, finally uh, to all, uh, so that we can see the destination for service, so make uh, the whole uh, image a kind of a sacred, holy, uh, and the truth, uh, and so that we can feel that the work of the National Park Service is very important. Yes, thank you. Yes, the, the, the music is helping the message, um, and uh, it's communicating that this is something serious, and that it's important, and it's sacred. The, uh, the faces, I don't know if you noticed, but the faces represent diversity. And they represent the diversity that we see right now in the United States. Um, it's growing. There's uh, more and more um, people in every community where you go. Um, communities are not looking all the same as much as they used to. But it's not true when you go to a national park as much. You still see mostly white people visiting the parks, for example. And so what they're trying to say with this message is, we are beautiful, we are diverse, let's reflect that also on the people we serve, and let's make sure that we are communicating that the parks are for everyone. There's one word, well, go ahead. Bait 各種不同的人,不同的顏色,不同的種族,這個他們強調這件事情。Thank you. There's one word that comes to my mind when I see this video, and that is vulnerability. Are you familiar with that word? What would be the translation? 大家應該認識這個詞吧,就是脆弱度,脆弱,vulnerability,脆弱性。so vulnerability, sometimes it's considered a negative approach, uh, a negative word. Sometimes people think being vulnerable means that you're weak. But Brené Brown, um, a psychologist and researcher, and uh, also somebody who has the most popular, one of the most popular TED Talks online, she talks about vulnerability as the birthplace of innovation, creativity, and change. So she sees that as something that's powerful. Continue? Okay. Thank you. So I want to invite you to be vulnerable today. And the reason why I'm talking about vulnerability when we talk about cultural competence which is what this session is about, is because when we try to communicate with people that are different than us, it's not always easy. And it's not always comfortable. It puts us in a place where we feel uncomfortable. And so we need to feel okay with that. We need to feel that the only way we can work with people that are different than us and influence change 
is if we're okay feeling uncomfortable and feeling vulnerable. 今天特别强调说，希望呢大家今天就脆弱一点啊，因为这个主题是文化方面的能力啊，就是说当我们要沟通跟自己背景不一样的人啊，其实呃，也许我们要去了解对方是怎么样的，所以他特别说，也许这个意思是先放掉自己的一些东西，或是让自己觉得自己是不足的。Thank you. So, in order for you to be able to open up and be vulnerable. And be open to understand the differences of others, and be able to communicate effectively with others. You need to know your audience, as、uh, it was mentioned this morning by our presenters. And talked about it when we talked about the, the smart chart, and then Ian talked about it when he talked about effective communication. You need to know your audience, and so we also need to know ourselves, and so. Finding that common ground between our story, our own personal narrative, and the way we see the world, and that of the other person or the people that we're talking to or talking with, that is what allows us to be effective communicators. And、uh, that's what we're going to do next. We're going to do a little exercise where we're going to tell our story and see how the other perceives it. 啊，因为这个，这这个等一下要做的事情在上面有写，我想各位应该比较清楚啊，就是要说，呃，这个关于自己的一些有关于啊环境教育方面的一些故事，我想等一下会解释更清楚一些。So what I need you to do is I need you to get close to someone else. If you're not sitting by someone, I need you to get together in pairs, two people working together, and I need you to grab your book. And use one of the pages that are empty. So, please, go ahead and find out what these are. So, you're going to use one of these. Okay. That's from 89. Page. And you're going to take turns sharing your story, your personal story. What do I mean by that? I want you to share.、I'm, I know that not all of you stand up when Ian asks、uh, if you were an environmental educator or if you consider an environmental educator. But I'm assuming that all of you consider yourselves educators. So I want you to tell your story from uh, uh, when you realize that you were an educator, that you wanted to be an educator or an environmental educator, and how did you get from that point to now? I'm going to tell you my story really quickly, so that you can see. Because we only have two minutes for you to share that story. And when you're telling a story, you want to pick the parts of your story that are the most important ones. It's different methods. I'm going to tell you more details or less details on the story. Think about when you read a novel, you read a book. There's a lot of details in the story. And then you go and you watch the movie when they adapt that book, and they have to pick the most important pieces of it. That's what I want you to do. I want you to think of your life as the novel, and the story you're going to tell right now is the movie version of that. Okay? So while, for example, if Professor Ye and I were working together, I would tell him my story, and he would use his book. To make a portrait or a drawing that reflects that story, it could be a portrait of me, or it could be a portrait of the pieces of my story. Basically, what is it that he is thinking when I'm sharing my story? Okay, and then at the end of the two minutes, he's going to share his drawing with me, and we're going to talk about. He's going to explain what are the elements of the story that were more, most significant for him. That he listened, that actually connected with with his own story. Okay, well, I want to let you all know that the just now said that to make your own life into a book that is behind the scenes, but now you want to make it into a movie, so you only have to say the most important things in the movie. Okay, so after the first two minutes, you have to tell the story to the person next to you. Okay, so after the first two minutes, you have to tell the story to the person next to you. Okay, so after the first two minutes, you have to tell the story to the person next to you. 
是怎么样成为一个环境教育者？你可以讲任何，对，是用这个角色来讲，你觉得比较重要的事情，讲两分钟。那另外一位呢，就在呃这个八十九页这个地方开始去画描绘，就是不是用写的哦，是用描绘，但你可以图文笔画也学 OK， 就是去描绘刚才他讲的东西，把它画下来，记录下来，两分钟之后再反馈，说你听到了什么，为什么你这样记录 ？Thank you. So I'm going to think of the best way of doing this. I want to demonstrate uh, by telling my story. And I'm thinking maybe Anne, you can help us. So I was thinking maybe I can do it with Professor Yeh, but um, I think if he's drawing, he won't be able to uh, translate. So if you draw, yeah, just draw Kung Fu Panda when I tell my story. That's a different story. I'm not going to tell the Kung Fu Panda story today. So, is it okay if I tell the whole story and then you translate? No. Okay. okay. So, when I was younger, when I was a teenager, I want to check the time. When I was a teenager, I discovered that I really love to explore nature especially exploring things and places that are unknown. Because I was thinking to this park in, on the mountains in the backyard of my house. And I was able to hike through a trail. And just not knowing what was around the corner got me really excited. And I wanted to do it again. And I immediately got hooked. But nobody in my family was interested in spending time in nature. Most of the time outside would be spent playing football, uh, soccer, or playing golf, which I hated both. But I found friends that would enjoy nature with me, and I kept doing it. Um, later on, when I was uh, in college, I still had that passion, but I was studying cinema. I was studying film and media production, um, and I wasn't happy with what I was doing, and um, my brother-in-law had the idea of inviting me to do a documentary film about the Colorado River Delta, the last portion of the Colorado River in the U.S., and the conservation efforts there. And I did. And I fell in love with the subject and with the fact that I could tell stories about nature. And so um, I, had, I was invited by a professor to study a PhD in natural resources so that I could tell those stories. And while I was doing my PhD, I started working with environmental educators and I realized that that was the best place to do that. And I became an environmental educator. And then I became a trainer of environmental educators um, be because I realized that I really enjoy helping others do a better job of what they do. And that led me one year to Taiwan to present here and uh, fell in love with your country and your food and your people. And I kept coming back. And that's how I ended up here. Uh, I want to share with you a few t h 大自然去去外面，其实都会做一些跟运动相关的事情，比如打高尔夫或者说足球。那这个他不是那么喜欢，呃，那他所以呢，他就喜欢找大家一起来跟他享受这个大自然。到他念大学的时候，呃，他开始去啊、呃，开始喜欢那个啊电影方面的一些东西，呃，一直到他的 brother-in-law 啊，就是他的那个应该是。他的呃，年金吧啊啊，或者兄弟吧，这就呃，开始邀请他去呃，科罗拉多河啊、呃，参与一些保卫的工作。后来他去念 PhD， 念博士的时候呢，啊、呃，他去念啊、呃，自然资源保育啊，因为这个原因啊、呃，所以他也认识了一些环境教育者。后来他认为这个是最适合他的工作。那后来他就开始去做这个事情啊、呃。后来我把他邀请到台湾来啊，后来开始。他喜欢台湾的人食物啊，所以我很很多的
So that's my story. Let's see what, what do you have. Thank you. We have there's a, there's the mountains. There's Pepe there, loving nature, and the movies, movie theater, and the Colorado River, plus training teachers, plus Taiwan and two hearts. <laughs> that's good. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. So that's what you need to do with your partner. Okay. And then we'll switch, and you'll be able to, whoever did the picture then is going to have two minutes to share the story. So first decide who's going to be doing the drawing and who's going to be telling the story first. Okay, time's up. Okay, this is now is the time where you're going to share your drawing with the other person, okay? Okay, so now we're going to go to another section. I'm going to draw something. I'm going to share. So, 
Can, um, can we have uh, somebody who might want to share their story in the drawing a little bit? Tell us a little bit about uh, what were the things that were more, most interesting to you from the story that the other person told you? And, and show your drawing to, to the group. Okay, so you can finish up that. Thank you. Hello. He's is a graduate student in the Institute of Environmental Education. He's a scientific background, he's a scientific background, he's a scientific background, he's a scientific 不过他现在也常常在犹豫说我们在领域跟领域之间如何去对话变成非常重要所以我觉得传播这边是一个很好的一个课程他是一个很好的一个课程他是一个很好的一个课程他是一个很好的一个课程他是一个很好的一个课程他是一个很好的一个课程他是一
it's important for us to be effective communicators. And so we need to understand the idea of diversity. And to me, diversity is the way we are different and the way we are similar to others. What are the things that we have in common and the things that are different from others? That's, to me, the definition of diversity. I think people can understand okay. this. Yeah, if you're ready. Thanks. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at, at, the, at a tool that's one of my favorite tools for talking about how we are different. It's called the Dimensions of Diversity. It's page 55 and 56. This tool right here, you'll see, has all these different categories right here. And as you can see here, we have concentric circles. This is similar to an onion. You know how when you're peeling an onion or cutting an onion, you have many layers, right? And so each of us is like an onion. And these are the layers that tell us who we are. At the core, at the center of who we are, we have our personality. Personality is the one thing that makes us unique. How many of you know anybody who might have twin brothers or sisters? Do you know anybody with twin twins? Yes? Okay. Are they exactly the same? No. Even if they look the same, each of them have their own personality, right? So personality is at the core of who we are and why we're different. Then we have the primary right here, right here, where we have things like our age, um, our gender, so um, I perceive life differently and the world differently as a male than my sister perceives as a female. Even if we go through the exact same experiences in our household, because society has treated women different than men, she's going to perceive the world in a different way, right? Same thing with race and ethnicity. You know, the color of my skin and the looks that I have, my face. People ask me where I'm from. Back in, in the United States, they hear me speaking Spanish and they're surprised that I'm Mexican. They think that I am from the Middle East or they think that I'm Italian or Greek. And so for me, that is a very important way or something that actually defines me a lot is my ethnicity and my race. It, because it affects how I interact with others and the way others see me. All of those are at the core, at the primary level, meaning that there are things that won't change that much in my life. My ethnicity is not going to change. My national origin is not going to change. I'm always going to be from Mexico. I'm about to get my American citizenship, uh, hopefully in the next few months. And when I become an American, I'm going to be an American citizen, but I'm still going to be originally from Mexico. So things that are here are things that are at the core and they're really hard to change. Then the secondary level include things like geographic location. Right now I live in Arizona. That can change. Before that I lived in Mexico. Uh, my socioeconomic status, you know, how much money I make, the house where I live, my personal experiences, my educational background. Um, I can tell you that it is really important for me because I spent too many years in school not to use it. You know, I, uh, I, I did my bachelor's degree and then I went into a master's in media arts and then I decided to go into, into the conservation field. So I did a master's in, in science, in, in um, natural resources, and then I did my PhD. And when I finished that, I missed school so much I wanted to go back, but I couldn't. 
I graduated and I move on to work. That's important to me. So all those things can change because you know things change when I went into into grad school. Then we have organizational. Organizational are things like, for example, the last time I was here, I was working for a different organization. 